Today we're working Psalm 52. Psalm 52 is frequently worked to overcome injustice and also to end gossip. I would today like to use Psalm 52 to overcome self-destructive tendencies. Psalm magic is very simple and easy and effective. The way we do it is we take the psalm in question and we speak it out loud all the way through once without stopping. This is frequently called an incantation. After that incantation, we go back through that psalm and we consider each verse in turn and we just hunt, search, dig for hidden meanings behind each word. And we look at those as magic seeds. By going through this process of searching, hunting, digging, and then applying what we find to the situation at hand, we are in a real way taking those magic seeds and planting them deeply in the fertile grounds of our mind, where they take root, they grow, they blossom forth, and then they bear fruit after their kind. And that's exactly what you and I are going to do together right now, today, with Psalm 52. Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. Thy tongue deviseth mischiefs like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness, see law. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee for ever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living, see law. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God, I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise thee forever, because thou hast done it, and I will wait on thy name, for it is good before thy saints. This psalm is a little different in its structure than any other psalm in the book. And it's interesting. It starts out by speaking directly to the problem. And so today we're talking about self-destructive tendencies. So we're going to look straight at the part of ourself that wants to destroy our happiness, to destroy our good, to destroy our success. Just talking to it directly here. We say, why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? So we're looking at it as a personified version of that tendency within ourselves as a mighty man. That self-destructive tendency acts as if it's a powerful person within the society of your own mind. And how many times do we just allow the inner bully to take over and to do its thing and to do whatever it wants with us and we just go along with it because we don't know how to stand up against that part of ourselves. Today we're standing up against that part of ourselves and we're saying, wait a minute, why are you boasting in mischief, you thought form, you? The goodness of God endureth continually infinite intelligence, infinite love, infinite peace. God has many different names, and we go through several of them in many of the the works that I I do, but let's just go with the big eight, as I call them. Infinite love, infinite law, infinite presence, divine or infinite life, soul, spirit, infinite intelligence, infinite truth. These are qualities of God. These things endure forever. Your self-destructive tendencies, not so much. And since you're recognizing this, and since you are directing your attention to that, those self-destructive tendencies start to break up immediately. Just by acknowledging this, infinite intelligence is forever. God is forever. You, not so much. Thy tongue deviseth mischiefs like a sharp razor working deceitfully. How many times do we put up with that in ourselves? Just the mean, nagging, 
cruel stuff that goes on in our minds. Sometimes it ridicules us. Sometimes it shames us. Sometimes we feel guilty. Sometimes we run ourselves ragged. Sometimes we push ourselves. Sometimes we don't give ourselves rest. Sometimes we don't let ourselves sleep. Sometimes we don't let ourselves eat well. Imagine if you treated a child like that, how you would be dealt with by society. Yet it's just perfectly fine to do that to ourselves. That self-destructive tendency is something that we just take for granted as if that's just the way life is. It's not. And nor should we put up with that from ourselves. So that part of ourselves that's constantly lying to us, telling us how bad we are, how we deserve to be punished, all of those things, we've just tuned it out. We just don't even listen to it anymore. It's just sort of white noise to us. We take it for granted. Stop doing that, we, it's telling us. We have to turn and face this and just recognize that this is mischief. This is deceit that we are telling ourselves and we're just letting it happen. If somebody was coming into your house and just taking your stuff, you wouldn't just let that happen. If somebody was coming and lying about your spouse or about your mother or about your good friend, you wouldn't put up with that. But we put up with it from ourselves, about ourselves. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness. These are like mental viruses. They're just thrilled every time they get to say horrible things about ourselves to ourselves. Listen to what you say under your breath. Listen to the kinds of things that you say to yourself. Now, you may be inured to that. You may be completely asleep to the fact that you say those things, but you're not asleep to the effects that they have. What are some of the behaviors that you notice about yourself that you destroy or attempt to destroy yourself? We put up with that all the time. That's lying, not righteousness. And then it says Selah. Selah is just take that in. Take a minute with that. <laughs> Sit with that for a second. What are you doing? Thou lovest evil more than good and lying rather than to speak righteousness. This is serious stuff it's telling us. It doesn't make it okay that you're doing it to yourself rather than to somebody else. That's not okay. It's not better. No way. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. Devouring. How many times have you caught yourself devouring yourself, devouring your success, devouring the parts of you that are trying to express yourself and to do something good for yourself. And you just devour that. Like I said, we're really good at hiding that from ourselves because we don't want to look at the fact that we're so mean to ourselves because we think we're good people. And ultimately we are good people, but good people don't let mean bullies treat others like that. As good people, we shouldn't put up with that with ourselves either. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. Selah. Now, I don't like to look at dealing with self-destructive tendencies destructively. It's not healthy for us to just be mean to the part of ourself that's being mean to us because that's just perpetuating it. What God is going to destroy for us is the behavior, is the thought process, is all of the machinations that create those self-destructive thoughts and behaviors. But God's not going to destroy that part of ourselves because that part of ourselves is just misguided. That part of ourselves is misprogrammed, uninformed is doing things based on programming that it created probably when you were a little kid. Probably when you were a little kid, you decided to do these things and to think these ways out of self-preservation, out of a type of coping. So you don't need these things anymore. So these tendencies, these patterns do need to be destroyed. But don't look at it as that we're destroying that part of ourselves because there's no part of us that is unholy but we are misusing parts of ourselves to unholy ends. So there's another law. 
it says, God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. See law. The land of the living is you, is your life, is all parts of you. Every part of you is holy. There is no part of you that is not of the gods, that is not holy. It can't be that God's going to destroy part of you. But God is going to destroy the misguided thinking and behavior. It's going to destroy those thought forms and so that you can reprogram those thought forms, relearn those things, relearn how to how to live in accordance with love, loving yourself. What a concept, right? Loving ourselves enough to say no to our self-destructive behavior. And recognizing that self-destructive behavior comes from pain that needs to be healed. And the, the destruction described in this psalm is healing the disease. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. So the dwelling place of God is Shekinah. And she's also your dwelling place. And remember that Shekinah is the substance under all form. So when God is plucking those thoughts out of your dwelling place and out of God's dwelling place, it's saying that no longer are we allowing ourselves to give form to these self-destructive thoughts. No longer do they have power over us. There's going to be a point at which they stop existing altogether. But for now, even though we ultimately would like those self-destructive thoughts to be completely destroyed, they have to go through their own process of death. In Christic theology, it's the three days Christ ascended into hell for three days and then then was resurrected. That comes from a pagan understanding of the corn god or, or whatever god of agriculture dies for part of the year and then is reborn, goes into the underworld, and then is reborn. Also, the myth of Persephone, she goes into the underworld, and then she is reborn. So that three days or that underworld experience is what we're talking about here, where it's being rooted out of the land of the living. So there's that time that it it takes for those tapes to stop playing. And during that time, we are asking infinite intelligence to take the effects away from them so that they're just white noise for the time being until they stop playing altogether. So we're not saying we're going to have to wait until we've completely reprogrammed our subconscious mind before we can start having any benefit. No, we're asking for an intervention to come in and just say, God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. So none of these thoughts will have any effect whatsoever in our lives during that time that it takes for them to cease to be altogether, during that whole underworld experience. The righteous shall also see and fear and shall laugh at him. The righteous shall also see and fear and shall laugh at him. So the righteous are fearing God. And when we say fearing God, it's always important to remind ourselves that that doesn't mean to be afraid of God to run away in fear of God. It's talking about experiencing the ecstatic presence of God. It's the type of fear that has no pain. It's the only way to have fear with no pain is to have fear of God. The righteous shall also see and fear and shall laugh at him. When we're laughing in derision at the self-destructive thought forms in our right mind, that's what righteousness is. When we're in our right mind, the whole idea of self-destruction is comical at best. The whole idea that we could ever A, be interested in self-destruction, or B, be successful at self-destruction is hilarious when we understand things from our right mind, from righteousness. Because ultimately, this world doesn't exist the way we think it does. So everything that we can do to destroy ourselves in this world exists only within the realm of a hallucination or a dream or a nightmare. But when we're in our right mind, we realize all I'm doing is having a dream of destroying myself and I'm just wasting my time. I'm wasting my energy. How funny that is that I do that. No, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to ask infinite intelligence to reinterpret this for me. And I'm going to sit in my right mind, in my righteousness, 
Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. So, in the physical realm, there are many examples of these kinds of people that think they are self-made, they're wealthy, they have things, they've got this figured out, they don't need God, they've got this, they know what they're doing. And those people usually are very sad. They may be powerful, they may appear to be happy on the outside, but they're never happy because they don't have the divine ecstasy of infinite intelligence. They don't have the understanding that they are eternal. They don't understand that they can't take any of that wealth with them. It's very sad to see these people. But when we look at this as far as our own self-destructive tendencies, there are things that we believe we get by doing that. We believe that we are enriching ourselves in some way by being so mean, by being so self-destructive. And that's just insane thinking. And we have to look at that and realize there's nothing that we can gain from being self-destructive other than delay and delusion. Delay and delusion are the only thing that we can actually ever get out of being self-destructive. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. You think about the region that these psalms came from. Olive trees were a source of wealth. Olive trees were your economic wealth. They were your sustenance. They were health. They gave you oil. They gave you food. They gave you everything that you needed. And so when you have a healthy olive tree, that's an important asset. Now, if you are a healthy olive tree in the garden of infinite intelligence, that means that all your needs are met. That's what that symbol is. All of your needs are met at every moment of time and point of space. You have nothing to worry about. You have nothing to fear. You are healthy. You are wealthy. You are wise. And you are cared for. That image of an olive tree planted in the house of God, planted in the house of God, means that in reality, you only have to look to the infinite for your good, for your safety, for your prosperity. And all of those self-destructive thought forms have no sustenance, and they will be easily weeded out quickly, easily, and effortlessly. But remember, it's only the thoughts and the thought forms that are being weeded out. It's not you or parts of you. The parts of you that entertain these thoughts, that, that believe in these thoughts, are misguided and just need to be loved through it, <laughs> need to be brought up into righteousness, brought up into your right mind. And that's what the psalm is, is doing for you. It says, I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. So that's hesed, that's that sphere number four on the tree of life. And if you trust in the mercy of God, what is mercy? Mercy isn't that God is going to stop being mean to you. Mercy means that only infinite love, only infinite joy, only prosperity, only health, only perfect resolution to your problems is God's will. Anything that doesn't look like that mercy isn't God's will and therefore can't ultimately exist, is not part of that olive tree can't be part of that olive tree because God would never plant that in God's house. So anything that is not of God will be uprooted and taken away. And so that's the mercy of God, that you can trust in this process, that God loves you completely and has nothing but uh, the desire for your happiness. God only wants you to be happy. That's God's will for you, is to be happy and cared for not to be self-destructive, not to go through these fearful experiences, not to go through crisis after crisis and chaos after chaos. That is not God's will for you. That is not part of that olive tree. So forever and ever, this is forever God wants you happy. God doesn't go through phases. God is not capricious. One day God will be nice to you and the next day God will be mean to you. No, the mercy of God is forever and ever. So if it doesn't look like God's mercy, it's not real. And you can't trust in anything other than God's mercy. It's very bottom line. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. Finally, we're speaking directly to the infinite here. So we're going to praise God forever 
because God has done it. And I will wait on thy name, for it is good before thy saints. Waiting on the name of God means that if it doesn't look like infinite mercy, then it's time to think about the names of God. What are the names of God? The qualities of God. We went through eight of them. So if you're not experiencing God's mercy, then you need to meditate on what God is so that you can fine tune yourself to that vibration so that you are in God's mercy because God's will for you is happiness. God's will for you is joy. If you are self-destructive, it means that you are contemplating things other than God's will for yourself and you're not doing that anymore. Recognizing that the only reason that you would do that is because you don't know any better. The only reason that you would be self-destructive is because you think that somehow that's necessary. There's parts of your mind that are at odds with the truth. And so those parts of you need love, need help, need joy, need nurturing to re-educate them so that those thought forms can be destroyed. Those thought forms can be taken from you so that those parts are no longer obsessed with destroying yourself again and again. We're re-educating those parts of yourself so that they have new functions. They have new tasks. So I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it and I will wait on thy name for it is good before thy saints. To praise something is to enthusiastically acknowledge how good it is. When you praise God, it is acknowledging graciously and enthusiastically that God is good. But that's almost redundant to say God is good because God means good. To say God is good it means to say good is good. And that's fun to be in that kind of redundancy, to recognize that good is good and that the creative force of the entire universe is good. And that's good. And you see how you can take this from one thought to the next? What is good in your life? That's praising God. What is good? What is working? Not what is self-destructing, but what is working? Are, do you have a place to live? That's good. Are you breathing? That's good. Do you have any kind of clothing? That's good. And you can go from there, one thing after the next. That's praising God. Not, oh, Jehovah up in the sky, you are so great. God doesn't need to have you stroke its ego. God needs you to praise what's good in your life so that you can orient yourself toward the good. And then it's much easier for these self-destructive tendencies to just fall away, to go under into that underworld experience where they will be fertilizer. And those parts of your mind will be used for new things in the future. It says, for it is good before thy saints. Now the saints in psalm magic are frequently the thought forms that you were created with. We have thoughts that we've created all by ourselves, and we have thoughts that we've created along with infinite intelligence. But then there are also thought forms that you came in with that are standard, that come with the soul. And those thought forms are saints in that they are always there for you. We always say you have the freedom to use your mind any way you want. That's true up to a point because you can't destroy your soul. That's impossible because that's not God's will. You can't destroy your soul. You can destroy your body. You can destroy your mind. But those things are illusory, ultimately. The truth about you, your soul, that's indestructible, even by you. So you can delay for many lifetimes into self-destructive tendencies. But ultimately, those saints win out because those saints are the thought forms that you were brought in with. And it says, I will wait on thy name for it is good before thy saints. That means that we want to be in alignment with the thought forms that God has about us in addition to upgrading our thought forms that we have about ourselves. And so then when we do a psalm like this, what we're doing is we're asking for infinite intelligence to re-educate us, to realign our thinking so that instead of destroying ourselves, we are praising that which is good in our lives. And as we learn how to praise that which is good in our lives, what is good in our lives expands and the tendency to, to self-destruct attenuates and gets smaller and smaller. And so you just keep coming back to that same psalm each and every day until you get a sense that whatever you brought to the psalm is being taken care of. You'll get a sense of peace 
and certainty about the whole thing. And that's when you'll know that it's working and that you can just move on to something else. Thank you so much for joining me today. Until next time, blessed be. Blessed be.